folks. John here with Victory Forge. Welcome back. It was your first time here. Welcome. So what's going on today? Uh, I got my good buddy Eric. Uh, we met back in the Army. We uh, had actually gotten flagged on a psych eval. Uh, you either passed, failed, or required additional evaluation. Me and him got put in the group that required additional evaluation. Yeah. And we know uh, we've just been fast friends ever since. So he's coming down from upstate New York. We like to get together a couple of times a year, you know, when life permits and everything. And um, we got a project plan. We're going to be making a Viking sword. And if you want to check it out, stick around. So what we got over here is our steel. We got 15N20 and 10N84. Stack them. So we've got 20 layers. We're going to fold that and forge weld it three times. So we end up with, is that 160? 160. 160 yeah. layers. We think this is enough for the, uh, for the sword stock and hopefully the fittings. But if not, we have another stack of steel here that we can use to whip up real quick for uh, making the fittings, like the guard and the pommel. All right. Alrighty, we got this bad boy cleaned up, tacked up. It's looking pretty good. So uh, the forge is warming up. We'll throw this baby in there, get some flux on it before it gets too hot. Bring it up to welding heat, fuse all this together, you know, another do it really. So after the initial forge weld, we're looking pretty good. Uh, we're at 20 layers, end cuts are looking nice. We got the surfaces, we're gonna re-weld, cleaned up. We'll basically just tack that baby together, forge weld it again, that'll give us 40 layers, and we'll do that two more times, and that'll give us 160. And that's what we're gonna make our sword out of. So here's what we got after the second weld. We're at 40 layers now. Looking pretty good. Everything's looking solid. It's behaving as one piece of material. So again, we just got our welding surfaces cleaned up. We'll forge weld that bad boy back together. That'll give us 80 layers. We'll do that one more time to get 160. And that'll leave us with a nice pattern. There will be a lot going on, but it'll still be bold enough to see. So, you know, there really ain't nothing to it. Alrighty, so we got one more forge weld to go. That'll give us 160 layers. Like I said, that'll give us a nice bold-ish pattern there will be plenty going on but it won't be too too hard to see my good friends uh jeremy and rebecca from clan runda viking art actually came up to hang out with us while we make this sword they do some really really amazing work i'm going to leave a link to their ig in the description box below check them out they do some awesome stuff they uh <laughs> actually made me this tankard right here which if you're wondering it holds three and a half beers so that's pretty sweet so here's what we got after the last forge weld. It's looking pretty good. So we got 160 layers of our pattern weld to steel here. Next thing we got to do is draw this baby out and do a nice uh, sword stock sized flat bar. On the finished blade, we would like a blade that is approximately two and a quarter to two and a half inches wide at the base. So we're going to draw this guy out into uh, a bar stock that's about two inches wide and about a quarter inch thick. Forge it to shape and go from there. You know, another do it really. Things 
far as we're going to get the tank forged out, we'd like about an eight inches to sort of play with, so we don't need a whole, whole lot. We've been working on getting this blade pulled out. Right now it looks pretty terrible, but the main thing we've been chasing is thickness. You see how we got a nice relatively uniform thickness all the way up and down. As we forge out the bevels and refine the taper and everything, we can fix all that. So, uh, you know, another two really. So now comes all the hand forging. So, we'd like a blade that's about two and a half inches wide at the base. So we're starting down here at the shoulder. We're just gonna start forging in the bevel. working our way up the blade, thinning out the bevel as we go. And, uh, you know, this is one of my favorite steps because it's where it actually starts to look like a sword. But anyway, we got a hand truck posted up back here. I really should build like an extendable shelf for supporting long work or something like that. But uh, that's all that's going on now. All right, so we've got the blade shape pretty much where we want it. So all we gotta do now is just go through and work in little sections and make sure everything's nice and straight and in line. And uh, then we'll be hitting the grinder. Alrighty, so here's what we got after tweaking that baby straight. There's still a little bit of a kick right here at the very, very tip, but that's the thickest part of the sword. We're gonna have to remove quite a bit of material anyway. But uh, we're definitely starting to look like something. So the next thing we're gonna do We've actually forged it pretty close to finished dimensions, and we were also going to the grinder every couple of heats and straightening up the edges as we forged. So there really isn't very, very much to do in terms of cleaning up the profile. We'll strike in the fuller, flatten out the bevels, and that's really about it. We want to heat treat this guy nice and thick to hopefully avoid any major problems, but uh, another to it, really. And if you were wondering, we're just shy of 32 inches of blade length. We got about 31 and three quarters. So... It's on the large side for a single-handed sword, but it's not unheard of. There have been historical Viking swords found with blades as long as 40 inches. So, uh, yeah, another to it, really. So, first thing we've done is just go ahead and get our bevels established. Uh, there's still quite a bit of material to remove. All we've really done, I don't know if you can tell it or not, but we've just tried to bring the edges down to a relatively uniform thickness on both sides so that when we go to quench it, one side doesn't hopefully cool too much faster or slower than the other and warp the sword or crack it. So uh, hopefully we don't have any issues. The next step is to go ahead and put the fuller in. Historically speaking on Viking swords, they had very wide shallow fullers that take up at least half the blade, sometimes more. So to put it in, we're gonna be using this six inch contact wheel. I'm sure some people are gonna ask, why didn't you forge in the fuller? And the reason for that, is if you forge in the fuller, you have to grind over it to get a clean fuller anyway, and the time it's going to take you to do that, you might as well just grind in the fuller. So it's faster, it's going to leave you with a better end result. You know, pretty much every professional swordsmith I've ever spoken to always says just grind in the fuller. And there's really no structural advantage to having a fuller that's forged in versus ground in. 
So there's a method of the madness and um, I'm certain that's a question I'm gonna get so I just wanted to go ahead and address it. Alrighty, so what we've done here is just go ahead and throw a file guide on and uh, hog off the bulk of the material. We'll go in here with hand files and refine that and make it all nice. So uh, when the time comes to fit up the guard, we should uh, be good to go. Alrighty, so we're gearing up for the quench. Uh, basically the setup we got, Eric's got a cinder block to stand on. We got a tank ammo tube full of vegetable oil, which is not the best quench it because it's a lot thicker than commercially made quenching oils. But if we heat it up to about 100, 120 degrees or so and reduce the viscosity, it will harden the sword, you know, acceptably. So there really ain't nothing to it, but we need, like I said, we need to heat this baby up. So we're going to heat up some scrap steel, dip it in there. And just uh, once the side of the can gets nice and hot to the touch, you know, your oil is just about hot enough and ready to go. Also, for our normalizing cycles, because we have to normalize the sword three times, with a blade this long and thin, you really don't want to lay it down on your anvil or anything that is going to pull the heat out of one side faster than the other and induce a potential warp. So we're going to bring the sword up to about 1500, and then we're going to hang it from that pair of vice grips that is connected to the bar I used to do pull-ups on, and just uh, normalize that bad boy three times, and we'll quench it. You know, another two, really. So, to preheat our quench oil, we just got a nice long piece of scrap steel. And we're basically just gonna drop that baby in there. Let the heat bleed into the oil. We'll do that a few times till it's nice and warm. You know, does it do it really. Alrighty. So what's going on now? We're do uh we're using a technique called painting the heat, where we're just passing the sword in and out of the forge nice and slow to spread the heat out over the whole blade. We'll get a nice even cherry right out of the whole thing and we'll be ready to quench this bad boy. Well, after we normalize it three times, obviously, but you get the idea. So, like I said, for our normalizing cycles, we got this guy hanging from a pair of vice grips. What's really cool, that's hard to capture on camera, but this is where you really get to get a sneak peek at the pattern. And that's gonna look pretty stinking awesome, I think. Alrighty, so we've done our three normalizing cycles on the sword. I went ahead and heated up our piece of scrap uh, five eight square one more time. Whenever the, uh, the side of the can and the oil itself it's just hot enough to be uncomfortable. That's uh, about what you want to aim for. Now, mind you, this is all knowledge from back before I had proper quenching oils and whatnot. This is just something I kind of figured out. So, uh, you know, take it with a grain of salt. But we're just about ready to quench this guy, so hopefully nothing goes wrong. All right, here we go. Going in for the quench. Keep it moving. Alrighty, so here we are to the quench. That gray is actually a really, really good sign of fully formed Martin sight, so uh, I'm confident the blade hardened well. There is a little bit of a warp. It's a bit hard to capture, but it's uh, it's not bad at all. I have fixed much, much worse, so we could fix that during the temper. That was actually Eric's first time ever quenching a sword. Uh, how you feel? Oh man, that was <laughs> that was nerve wracking. Yeah, you to say the least. Yeah, you ain't kidding. It's, it's um. There's a lot of work that went into that, and that was like an all or nothing kind of moment. Yeah, like the thing about doing swords, especially doing Damascus or whatnot, there is something that can go wrong at every step that will completely destroy your project, and the quench is the most likely for that to happen. So this is two days worth of work, you know, that's pass or fail right here, right now. So it's um every time you quench a sword, I'm always shaking when I do it, and no matter how many times you do it, it never gets any easier. So uh, it's 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 a fun experience. See what I mean? There's a very, very slight warp in the blade. I have fixed much worse than that during the temper, so uh, we don't have a problem with that at all. So assuming we don't find any cracks during the finish grinding, we're looking good. Alrighty, so to fix that slight warp as well as go ahead and temper the blade, we're gonna be torch tempering, doing sort of a differential temper. Uh, if you watch my Irish ring hilt sword series, it's the same thing I did with that. It's the same thing I've done on most of the swords I've made. We're just gonna take our torch, Heat the center of the blade up to a nice springy blue. 
let the heat bleed into the edges to a nice, uh, you know, light brown or so, so the edges will be harder and the middle will be more flexible. But we got it clamped to this straight piece of steel. We'll just work our way up the blade working in sections. We got a little spray bottle full of water to keep the heat from bleeding into the edges too fast. Uh, with how thin the fuller is versus how thick it is right here, it really shouldn't be too much of an issue. But we'll do that once from each side and that should fix the warp and uh, give us a nice strong flexible blade. So, obviously I'm running the flame on my torch pretty cold. So, like I said, we're just working our way up the blade a few inches at a time, uh, getting a nice, relatively uniform royal blue on the fuller, re nice, relatively uniform straw on the edges. Uh, but there really ain't nothing to do it. We're just moving the clamps out of our way as we go, and uh, we'll get this bad boy tempered. Alrighty, so after doing the blue backing, the blade's good and straight now. There's a little bit of waviness going on on the edge, but that's just from the grinds being uneven. That, uh, that'll all be smoothed out as we take it up the grits. But looks like we're good to go. Let's give it the flex test. All right, so now we're just checking the blade for flex. We're gonna bend it about 20, 25 degrees or so in each direction. You know, it should obviously not break and it should spring back to true. So unfortunately, that's actually all the time we have to work on this sword. Uh, Eric's gotta get going back up to New York. He's got about a 12 and a half hour drive. And uh, we actually, I didn't put it in the video, I did some creative editing to make it all flow together well, but we actually ruined our first billet. We uh, got the bright idea to twist it after we'd been drinking all day. And um, some things went wrong and the billet ended up shearing into two pieces and we had to throw it out. But this is the same layer count we were originally going for, but we did have to start over after about two days. Uh, yeah. But all in all, you know, the goal wasn't necessarily completion, the goal was just to have fun. Uh, we'll finish this next time we get together, which will either be in this fall or next spring. We'll see how everything shake out. So be sure to stick around and uh, look out for Viking Sword Part 2, whenever that's going to be coming. But like I said, you know, it's not the end of the world that we didn't finish it. I haven't seen this crazy bastard in a couple of years. And uh, we had a great time, but that's all I got for you. If you like what you saw, like, share, subscribe, all that jazz. Always more cool stuff coming, and uh, y'all take care.